Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video I'll be showing you guys how I made a thermic lance with nothing but cane sugar and pure oxygen. Now there's two videos currently up on YouTube detailing how to make a thermic lance with readily available materials. One of them uses bacon to do it and that video is by Boing Boing Video. And the other one uses a brake line tubing which is made of steel and the creator that made that was Nighthawk and Light. Both videos are very good. I recommend you check them out. I even used the instructions found in Nighthawk and Light's video to make my own thermic lance from brake line tubing. However, that's for another video. This video, I'm going to be making one out of sugar, which is much cheaper than brake line tubing and not as exotic as using prosciutto. Now, a thermic lance functions by flowing a stream of pure oxygen through a combustible material, supplying it with an oxygen-rich environment to burn. High-grade thermic lances can reach a maximum output temperature of over 4,500 degrees Celsius, which is just as absurdly hot as it sounds. They reach these temperatures by incorporating reactive metals as the combustible material, typically iron, magnesium, or aluminum. At high enough temperatures, these metals will ignite in a pure oxygen environment, and they burn very vigorously. As you might expect, the high temperature oxidation of these metals is what derives the name thermic lance. Nighthawk and Light incorporated this form of a thermic lance in his video by utilizing a steel brake line tubing as the fuel. On the other hand, Boing Boing Video used fat-rich prosciutto as fuel, which supplied the energy to produce similar output temperatures. I watched through both of these videos, and my first thought was that they really overcomplicated things to melt through a steel pan. You don't need $20 of prosciutto in a very intricate assembly or even a brake line tubing to melt through some metal. All you need is some pure cane sugar. People often underestimate just how much energy is stored in regular sucrose. Your typical kilogram bag of sugar contains 17 megajoules of energy. That's a little over four times the energy stored in a kilogram block of TNT. Even if it doesn't burn when you put a flame to it, that doesn't mean that the energy can't be utilized, especially given an oxygen-rich environment. Now to actually get our sugar to burn in an oxygen-rich environment, we have to cast it into a cylindrical mold to hold it. For this, I'll just be using a toilet paper roll. At the end of the toilet paper roll, I put a small amount of steel wool, which should help ignite the sugar once oxygen starts flowing through it. Casting the sugar into the mold is as easy as making caramel, so we put it onto the hot plate and heat it up. Yummy. With the mold filled up, we throw in the freezer for a couple hours, and after that, we take it out and drill a nice sized hole through it. After this, we hook it up to the O2 cylinder, and we're ready to go. Now, given that I used about 300 grams of sugar to make this, the amount of energy contained within it is approximately equivalent to the amount of energy required to accelerate a baseball into near Earth orbit. Now it's time to see how a stainless steel pan fares against that amount of energy.
Now after this, I tried improving upon the design by infusing aluminum powder into the sugar. I also used erythritol instead of sucrose, making it a little bit more energy dense. However, while it did perform well in testing, even if I turned the oxygen up a little bit, it would explode into a shower of sparks. Thank you guys for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.